Director of Scouting Andrew Ivins to give us a behind the scenes look at the rankings process for 2024. Andrew, obviously very still early in this cycle, but uh, your weekly rankings meetings. Tell us about the process. What is it like right now putting together a top 247? Fun. <laughs> uh, we're coming across a lot of guys that most of us on our staff and on this recruiting council don't really know, right? You're familiar with the guys in your region, but we work off a, a big spreadsheet where every week we are pouring through not only the film and, and the tape, but also the measurements, the stats, the multi-sport stuff. So that's what it's really been like the past few weeks. That's what it's going to continue to be like here over the, over the next few weeks as we get into March. And then we're going to update that top 247. And I anticipate a ton of movement. Really, with this update, what we're looking to do is we're looking to get all these prospects in the right neighborhood, right? Then we'll figure out the house that they're going to be in at the end of the day, whether that's a first round grade, a second round grade, uh, a day three grade. Maybe it's outside the top 247. So it's a lot of film. Uh, it's a lot of comparing, uh, having multiple eyes get on the same kids. And then as these camps start to happen, and we're going to get our first one this weekend with the Under Armour stop outside of Atlanta, we get more and more data. And all this is always data driven. You also got track season started down here uh, in South Florida. I know other parts of the country as well. So we're collecting data. This is just the start of the process, but it's a lot of fun, again, because you're watching a lot of film and uh, you get to see guys from different parts of the country uh, and kind of uncover them. Yeah, you said it. We'll have to wait until March for the next rankings updates. But uh, there's still a few recently named four stars on to on top 247 watch. So let's start with one of them. How about Selman Bridges out of Texas? What about the corners game? Has you considering a jump into that top 247? It's the frame. You know, he's listed anywhere from six foot two to six foot four, depending on uh, whether that's a huddle or a certain service. This is a kid we saw down in Miami at the Battle of Miami event. Uh, Gabe Brooks, our analyst there in Texas, he said, keep an eye out for this guy. I couldn't miss him. I mean, he is that big on the sidelines. I think there was one play where someone threw up a jump ball in the end zone and he just swatted it away. He's got tentacles for arms. He, he's really good in the air. He can run as well, has a little bit of a track background. And if you look at the NFL draft, the top two rookie corners, both those guys were long, lean individuals, Tyreek Woolen, Sauce Gardner, and we see uh, some similarities with Selman Bridges. So we really like him, would not be surprised if he finishes somewhere in that top 247 in this update, and he's a guy that keeps climbing in the rankings. He's getting all the big offers. We like to see that, but we trust our eyes, and we were on Selman Bridges a little bit early there because we think he has the tools to make a difference at the next level. Texas Tech commit Ivan Carrion is another newly minted four star. Andrew, what stood out of that prompted you and the rankings council to bump up his ranking? It's a, you're going to notice a theme here, guys. It, it's the frame. He is six foot six. That's a verified number with an 84 inch wingspan. As we try to project these young individuals, you know, they still got another year of high school to go, but really the bodies are just now starting to mature. And Ivan's a guy that's hovering right around 200 pounds. You see this film right here. Is he a wide receiver? Is he, is he a tight end? We think based on the measurements we have, he's eventually going to put on some weight, move to that maybe Y, F tight end kind of move around. And he's a walking mismatch. He averaged 22.9 yards per catch there as a junior, over 2,000 yards receiving the past two seasons and one of Texas's highest classifications. He's headed to Texas Tech. That's where he's committed. We had a chance to see him down in San Antonio at the National Combine, do some one-on-ones. And he's a, a walking mismatch, big catch radius. So I think it's a really good get for the Red Raiders. And uh, it, you're seeing it more and more, not only on Saturdays and Sundays, but these teams are getting these big, long individuals uh, to kind of create mismatches with that length. It's hard for a corner or a safety to uh, stick with a guy that has that near seven foot wingspan. I love it. We are having fun on the show so far, but guys, the chat is just popping off right now. Our friend Josh Pate is there. National recruiting analyst Gabe Brooks is dropping in some nuggets. And of course, our 24-7 sports director of research, Ryan McGrady, also in there. So I will remind you to hit that like button, trying to hit 100 likes by the end of the show and also subscribe to the 24 7 sports youtube channel to be a part of the wild chat we got some more questions here for you though andrew we'll do a deep dive into texas tech recruiting a little bit later in the show as you were just talking about but how about a michigan state commit jamari howard he pledged back in september when he was considered just a three-star corner he's now earned that fourth star you just saw him recently in person what did you see that makes him a top 247 candidate well, people always wonder how do our, our rankings fluctuate and, 
and what what drives the changes. And Jamari Howard's a perfect example. He's a kid down in Miami-Dade. He's not playing at one of the big premier schools like a Miami Central or Miami Northwestern. So he's playing a little bit lower level of competition. Uh, and that's why I wanted to get some eyes on him. And I happened to run into him at a seven-on-seven -seven event in Naples. He was playing for the South Florida Express. We knew he was big. We knew he was over six foot one. We knew he was uh, extremely long, near 80-inch wingspan. Again, we keep talking about heights and weights here and, and frames and trying to project long-term. But Jamari Howard, we knew he was big. Uh, he dominated that lower level of competition. How would he look on a field with other power five prospects? And he aced the eye test. He's a guy that's very comfortable in off-man coverage on Friday nights, but when I saw him in that tournament setting, he was pressing it and he was being able to redirect wide receivers with his hands. We love to see that. He's got the long speed as well. And you mentioned Michigan State and Mel Tucker. I think they did an excellent job of making an evaluation, getting Jamari Howard locked up now, because I would not be surprised if the SEC, maybe that uh, Miami, a uh, Florida, a uh, Florida State, they try to get involved and flip this kid. So kudos to the Spartans for getting in early on Jamari Howard. Kamar Matuti is another recruit that we want to hit on. This is a player, Andrew, that we saw at the National Combine in San Antonio last month. Uh, I was actually on door duty during the registration, so I'm kind of filtering through some of the prospects as they're coming in. I looked at him and I'm like, oh, who's this guy? He actually plays at Campbell Hall in Los Angeles, a smaller high school, so maybe doesn't have the attention. But what propelled him and what have you seen from the West Coast linebacker that's made him now a four-star prospect? I think it's the profile, Blair, right? We know he's got some good testing numbers. He's over six foot one, pushing 225 pounds, four seven kid on the lasers. But then you look at what he's done at the high school ranks. He's ran for nearly uh, 1,300 yards, could probably play running back at some uh, FBS school if he wanted to. But just how he moves on the defensive side of the ball, he's really good in space. I don't know if I've seen a 2024 20, linebacker with better coverage tape. And I'm talking linebacker in terms of a guy that could – you know, crash the A gap one down and then drop back in, into space the next. So, uh, you know, we always talk about um, west of the Mississippi. And to me, he's an individual that you don't really see out there. So I think if you're a fan of a Pac-12 school or, or the new look Pac-12, like you want to lock him up because I wouldn't be surprised if the SEC eventually came calling at this point because I think he's got the frame. I think he's got the skill set. I think he can move very well and change directions to play in a conference like the Big Ten or the SEC. So. Uh, interesting storyline to follow. Be, you know, is, is Kamar going to stay out on the West Coast, or is he going to go to one of these programs uh, in what are kind of forming the, the two power conferences, the SEC and the Big 12, or excuse me, the Big 10? <laughs> the Big 100 at this point. Um, thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Appreciate the help here. Hey, that was just a taste. You can actually find the full list of four stars on 247sports.com. Also, be sure to check this out, the 24-7 Sports Football Recruiting Podcast with Andrew and Cooper Patagna. New episodes dropping every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, wherever you get your podcasts.